What's up? How's it going? This is definitely going to be an experiment of a video. This is going to have no cuts. This is just going to be, be me talking through a list of a big variety of topics, things that are on my mind, uh, just to get a little personal, I guess, things that are not necessarily worthy of a video on their own, but maybe just things that I want to bring up and really just an experiment. This is inspired by Craig Adams, one of my favorite YouTube channels. He was doing this a while back. Occasionally he would just do these solo updates. So I guess that's what I'm doing here and we'll see how it goes. This is for the hardcore people that just wanna, I don't know, hear, hear what's going on in my head a bit and um, some random topics. So let's give it a try. Uh, first thing on the list is podcast. So this is a podcast, Mike. This is not a podcast, I guess. I mean, what's the difference at this point? But um, I've been saying it forever. You know, honestly, before I ever started a YouTube channel, I mean, I'm, well, first of all, yeah, this no cut thing, I'm not very good at it. Um, <laughs> we're not cutting. But first of all, I, I just, my mind skips a lot. Uh, before I ever started a YouTube channel, two plus years ago, which took me a year plus to ever even commit to, I thought of starting a podcast even before that, but I just figured it would be hard. Um, I had nowhere to really start. Um, and the truth is, is I enjoy podcasts more than YouTube for the most part. Um, definitely historically over the years, I think in the last, um, in the last year I've started watching YouTube more than usual. But for the most part, I'm a podcast junkie. I just love that format. I love hearing conversations go deep. They go a level lower. They get into the real stuff. And I just love that. So what I'm trying to say is I'm finally starting. I, so it's going to be the Matt Loberstein show. It's going to be interviews. Um, a lot of entrepreneurs, this is not an Amazon tips show. So a couple of you might be disappointed that I care to talk about things outside of Amazon as well. I'm sure there will be some overlap. There probably will be because that's a lot of where my network is. There will be some of that, some, you know, some high level stuff in that area. I'm sure some broader e-commerce brands and stuff, some other entrepreneurs that have nothing to do with e-commerce. Um, and in general, just stuff that piques my interest. I think the general undertone, the general thing that's going to tie everything together on the podcast is going to be um, improves your life. It's this, that's the kick that I've been on for, you know, five years. So whether it's, it could be even health, it could be business, it could be money. Well, money and business, that's kind of the same, but you know, it could be all these different pillars of improving your life. That is kind of the general thing that goes on, but Really, it's going to be hopefully just whatever piques my interest, whatever I think there's something to it, I think that other people will think there's something to it. So that's kind of my thoughts on that. Um, I've definitely overly complicated it, which is part of why it's taken me so long, but that's kind of how I am when I start things, is I overcomplicate it. So I, I was gonna get into this a little later as well, but let's just say I want to do this as a video podcast, multiple angles, you know, really, really high production value, re like as good of audio as I can manage and make everything look good, sound good, have it be tight. You know, I'm, I'm learning about interviewing. I'm trying to get to a point where they will be genuinely good. You know, I don't want to just release a mediocre podcast. I want to release a great podcast that is something I would listen to, which is something that I would share, which is something that people listening to will hopefully share and enjoy and, and benefit from. And not just on a tactical level, but just on a improving or even entertaining to some level, but just there's something to it. I suck at talking sometimes. Like I feel like I'm sucking at talking right now, but we're gonna keep going. The point is, I just feel like there's a deeper level to a lot of things. And that's what I wanna try to get into on the podcast. Why are people really doing what they're doing? What is the real missing detail in people's story, things like that. So that is coming. Um, I guess I'll also mention, I do already have a podcast with my friend, Sam Feldman. Um, that is a fun podcast. It's, it's me and him every time it's a different format, no video as of now, but you know, you can check that out. It's called thoughts from space rock. Um, if you like this ramble, there's probably a really good chance that you would like that even better, which is the only reason that I'll mention it here. 
this ties into the next point, which is the clips channel. So with this ambitious idea to do video, um, podcasts, I was inspired by Joe Rogan's channel. He has a JRE clips channel, which is what I personally watch. That's how I consume Joe Rogan's podcasts, which is not really how I consume other ones, by the way. But I feel like since I have this little bit of a kickstart with YouTube, I want to do video podcasts. And then I also want to chop up the podcasts into chunks. You know, let's say I go on a five minute ramble about biohacking and diet. Then out of this two hour conversation, there's a five minute clip that says Matt Loberstein on, you know, why he doesn't eat whatever or something like that. And then that stands alone as a clip. And then let's say I'm talking to Graham Stephan. It can be Graham Stephan on being insanely frugal and it's a seven minute and 30 second clip and it lives on the clips channel. And my, my hope, my idea is that the clips can maybe some of the clips could go semi-viral. They could tap into other people's audiences and those can help feed into the main podcast, uh, which will live on my main Matt Loberstein channel and then also on any of the audio platforms. But since I'm starting for audio from scratch, I'm expecting the video YouTube component to get the initial push at least. And then some people will probably choose to listen to audio only and both, both are great. In fact, if people listen to audio, I think that's awesome. I just think that the video has an edge right now. And I think that's kind of where the opportunity is, is to do beautiful video and do this clips thing and all of that. So I'm trying to make my efforts worthwhile and give it a real shot by doing all that. So the clips channel is actually already up. Uh, you can check that out. Just type in Matt Loberstein clips. Um, because I decided I already have this huge backlog of long content that most people have probably never watched. I mean, if it's, you know, 30 minutes plus, if it's an hour plus, uh, you know, if it's a, one of my old ask Matt live streams for an hour with a million different questions, they probably have, most people probably haven't sat through all of that or a talk that I gave or just me being interviewed on somebody else's channel, perhaps. Um, there's a lot of that already. So I'm starting, I'm launching the clips channel by going through those. So, you know, picking out these bits and pieces. There's a lot of Amazon stuff in there because of course that's a lot of what I've talked about. So there's, that's going to kind of be almost like a database because, you know, I haven't made a standalone YouTube video about every topic when it comes to Amazon, but I probably have answered it at some point somewhere. So there's, you know, going to be a minute long clips, three minute long clips, eventually with podcasts, maybe even a 10 or a 20 minute clip. If there's like a chunk that is like a deep dive into some subject that could stand alone as a clip, that is the, that is the plan with the, the clips channel. Um, cause yeah, it's just really easy to binge watch those and it's more like searchable. You know what you're clicking on uh, me too. Like I might not want to listen to a three hour long Joe Rogan episode, but if I'd see, you know, Joe Rogan on area 51. I'm like, holy shit. Yeah. I'm going to click on it. I, I, that's a whatever, but you know, it, it creates this bite-sized content. So that's the idea with that. Uh, next subject, a bit of a, a bit of a turn, um, losing my ambition. So this is something that I've talked about fairly openly. I feel though. I don't know if I've ever like just directly, addressed it. But I think those of you that have really watched my journey unfold through YouTube and through, you know, through Facebook, through Instagram, through all of the channels that I am creating content, I think you'll kind of see that I was on this momentum of growth, 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 growth. And then I just wanted to chill out a bit. <laughs> and I think that that is so demonized in the entrepreneur space. It's like, we just think that entrepreneurs need to out entrepreneur themselves and they need to out entrepreneur everybody else. And your Amazon has to be bigger than this guy's Amazon. And your, your YouTube channel has to be bigger than this guy's YouTube channel. And it's just all this kind of like mindless hustle and grind for something that we don't even know what we're trying to achieve. And I think that's why I've become so much less ambitious and um, you know, I think I hit this burnout or whatever you would call it. Um, geez, probably like a year, year and a half ago at this point. I mean, you can probably kind of see the progression, uh, if you were to really like, uh, you know, analyze everything that I've sort of said over, over two years. And, and this isn't to say I'm not hyped on all the same stuff. I am. I mean, I think online business is great. I think Amazon FBA changed my life and is still an amazing way to go about it. I just think that 
you know, when you hit kind of what you're going for, it doesn't make sense to just mindlessly go for more if you don't want that. So, you know, I'm much more trying to build the life that I want. I want to, I want to have the time and the space to do the things that I want to do. I want to wake, I want to sleep eight or nine hours a night, every single night. I do most of this, by the way. I want to read every single day. I want to go out in the sun every day. I want to go on a walk with Jessica for an hour every single day. You know, I'm not trying to build the biggest thing in the world. And I think that entrepreneurs put a lot of pressure on themselves, put a lot of pressure on other entrepreneurs to build, 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 build. And I think that it kind of misses the point of life. So that's a bit of why I feel I've you know, become less ambitious, which is a weird thing to say because it sounds bad, (laughs) but I don't think it is. I think I'm just trying to focus more on the way I feel and what's around me. You know, I'm, I'd rather, I, I, I want to meditate more. I want to be present when I eat. I don't want to be you know, my ambitions are not to have a giant office building to where I'm eating, you know, dinner at the office on a paper plate at 8 p.m. Like, I'd rather be, you know, done for the workday at, at 3 and, you know, go for a walk and then eat dinner and then, you know, I don't know, go see the sunset. And I, That's just how I am. I'm just trying to build a life that is a little bit more free-flowing and creates the space for whatever I determine is what I want to do for the next year, for that day, you know, whatever it is, but just creating space. So yeah, I mean, I guess that's probably all I have to say on losing my ambition, but just a, just an interesting thought, but something that has been on my mind for a while, uh, YouTube problems. So some of you may have seen about, oh, I don't know, six weeks ago, I made a video. I think it might've been called something with YouTube problems in it, but I'm still very much in that space. I'm YouTube is the hardest thing I've probably ever done. If we consider it entrepreneurship in, in my entrepreneurial journey, YouTube is the hardest, let's say just like personal project I've done. I, I never thought I would struggle with this so much. It's, it's honestly weird because you see all these YouTubers, they're like, you know, I quit YouTube and you're like, Oh, you fucking like, what's like, what's so hard about it? You know? Um, but it's just like, I don't know. There's, it it just is, this probably sounds so silly to some people that aren't in that situation, of course. But, um, you know, it's just really been a struggle. Um, now that I even say it out loud, it just sounds so silly that I hardly even feel the same way as I feel when I'm in solitude, feeling bad to myself. But, you know, to put it into perspective, over the past two months, I really, really buckled down on YouTube, I feel. Before this, <laughs> this is not me buckling down. This is me just experimenting and saying some stuff. But I had you know six or eight weeks of two to three videos every single week with a solid chunk of three videos a week for a big portion of that. And that is a lot of work. And these were thoughtful videos with a lot of editing, a lot of planning. You know, these were not just sit down and talk to a camera for 10 minutes, hit record, hit, hit stop and upload it. Like these were really what I feel, feel like were the best videos I've ever made. And the comments definitely agreed with that. And everybody that has watched my videos, particularly in the past few months, um, that, that commented on those videos, you guys are like the real ones. I mean, I really think there was some good stuff and I really think that, um, I also think it's funny for me to say my own stuff is good, but I just mean I was putting more effort in. I was trying to really make some great videos and the comments agreed with that. What is a bummer is that just nothing has happened. <laughs> like, I mean, if we're thinking about this as ROI, which I kind of just got saying, I d- I'm not thinking about things as ROI as much, but it's just hard to be motivated to keep up that pace when when nothing is happening. And obviously if I was hearing somebody say this, I would say, you know, you stop focusing on the numbers, do this for yourself, all of that. But I kind of just feed off of momentum. You know, if those video, if those other topics are doing really well, I'd be like, Oh yes, I'm doing the right thing. Like I need to keep this going. Um, but instead it's like when I put a lot of effort into a video and I put it out and it's just, it does okay for like the first 12 hours and then it just dribbles off a cliff forever. And then YouTube never, I never have gotten a video pushed in like 
so long. It's been so hard. I don't get it because there's channels that just constantly have momentum and they just tear up to the next tier constantly. I don't know what I'm doing wrong. I feel like I've made some really good ones. Um, not to sound just, I mean, I guess if you're listening this far at this point, I'll just be a dick. Uh, cause at this point you probably like me if you're, if you're listening to this far, I feel like I've, I feel like I've put some effort into my videos that really put me into the the higher percentile of, of, of YouTube channels, not just in Amazon content, but just in general, like I'm putting in real effort to a lot of these videos. Whereas I don't know, I feel like they should be doing well. I feel like if they were just put in front of people by the algorithm gods or whatever, I feel like they would do well, which is kind of the bummer. And so, you know, I was sticking on that schedule and then I just kind of hit a wall right after the burnout video, which is kind of ironic. I was just like, I think it was because I think that might've been my best video I ever made. And it did like maybe the worst of any video over the first 48 hours that I've ever had. I think it's been about 10 days now and it still doesn't even have, it has like 900 views or something, which is, I'm very grateful for the 900 views. You know, I could be stuck at two views, but, um, you know, I just want to hopefully hit a stride of momentum so it can lead somewhere because of until then it just feels like this constant battle. Whereas I get all excited about these new ideas or I make a video that I feel really good about and I'm so excited to get it out there, but then it just dribbles off a cliff and I'm like, ah, like I'm just kind of, why am I doing this? I, that's the way it feels sometimes. So it's just a bummer. I don't want it to sound so negative. I'm insanely appreciative of anybody watching a ramble like this. And I'm insanely appreciative of anyone who watched or commented or anything on any of those videos or any video I've made, but it's just a bummer to put a lot of effort into something. And over time too, it's not like I did this once and I'm like, Oh, it didn't work. Like what the heck it's, it's, I, I had the consistency. I upped the quality. I made some topics I thought were important and just still dribbling off a cliff. It's just weird. And then, and then I went silent for a week and everything just died. It was like, wow, like it's weird. It just, it just feels weird. Not that I I don't look, I don't want to be famous. I don't want any of that. I just want momentum so I can put out topics I feel are important and impact more people. I'll get into this on a later point, um, further down the list that I want to talk about, but it'll tie in. But That's a bit of where my head's at with YouTube is just like, it can make me really bipolar. And again, just to re- reiterate, I don't care about the likes or whatever. I just care about what it can lead to and sort of the feedback loop is what I care about. So hopefully, eventually, one of these videos that I put effort into, um, you know, gets in front of some 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 new faces. Um, we'll see. Time anxiety. Uh, this is an interesting one. This is something that has been on my mind for so long. This is something that me and Sam talk a lot about on the thoughts from space rock podcast. Cause I think almost, almost all of our anxiety or worries or ambitions too ultimately come down to time anxiety. It's like this idea that we're not going to get to do what we want to do. We're not going to have the free time to explore the interest we have. We're not going to have the time to, you know, do the creative projects that we've always wanted to do. We're not going to have the time or the financial means to travel or something like that. And a lot of the anxiety that I have still now, and I, and I see this a lot in the entrepreneur space and I talk to this a lot with people. So I know I'm not completely crazy on this is so much anxiety just comes to like, I can't get enough done or I'm wasting all this time on social media or, you know, I sat and did nothing for three hours or like, why am I not doing the thing that I know I should be doing? Why am I not doing the thing that I want to be doing? Like, why are we just wasting time? And so I've definitely been obsessing over time and time management. I've made videos about this. Some of the ones that I've talked about in the last point that I feel like are important and good ones. And that is what I think is so important. Um, so that's just something on my mind is, you know, trying to be very intentional with my time. Um, I think I have time on a later point too, but whatever, this is a casual video. We'll talk about it some more, some more later, but time anxiety is kind of the concept of we're not going to have time to do the things that we want to do. And that kind of, I think drives a lot of what a lot of our anxiety and a lot of what we are doing is just this fear of not having time. We spend, we spend our time being afraid for time that we think we're not going to have. 
camera gear updates. That's a, that was a weird U-turn. Um, so a lot of this came through the, um, the, the podcast gear setup because I wanted, you know, guest me angle, guest angle, wide angle. So I needed some new camera stuff, obviously some microphones, things like that. Um, and so for the last year and a half, two years on YouTube, I've been using a Sony a7S II with the 16 to 35 G master. It's an expensive setup. Uh, honestly, it's probably more than I ever needed, but I was trying to get really legit about YouTube even back then. And for the podcast, I decided to go with two Sony a6400s. They're lower end, but a lot more capable in a lot of ways. They have the the touch screen for focusing. They have the flip screen so you can actually see yourself filming. So you don't spend 20 minutes filming a clip and not knowing that you're filming, which is a problem that I had on that camera all the time. I'm also monitoring this camera on my, on a phone right here to know that I'm still recording, um, which is something that wouldn't really work with that one except for photos, which sucked. Um, so it's like a really high end camera, but um, so much less capable in a lot of ways. It's full frame. The A6400s are not. So the lens thing changes. So I'm selling the A7S II and that really expensive, really legit lens. I love that lens. But when I got the A6400s, it was just going to be for the podcast. And then I decided, you know what, this is just better for me, for my purposes in general. So I'm actually just now doing two A6400s, which are going to be for podcasts and for YouTube, which I've actually been doing for a while. Nobody knows that I changed. It looks exactly the same and selling the a seven S two and the G master got a couple lenses for these ones. Um, sold my Canon G seven X because now the a 6,400 is like in between enough. So I was able to just simplify my camera gear a lot and honestly end up with, you know, two setups for, I mean, I, I probably, broke even or even made money by downgrading like this, but I feel like the setup is better. Like it's the a 6400 is plenty. It's in the autofocus is better. It's so sharp. It has the flip screen. It has the touch screen, which somehow this, you know, $2,000 plus a seven S two does not have any of that. So yeah, they're fantastic. And I'm really happy with that change and, um, smaller form factor. Yeah. It, that's kind of, that's kind of the changes in terms of my, my, my kit. Oh, I guess that reminds me I have, so I've had all my gear and kit at, at kit.com slash Matt Loberstein for people that are into that stuff, but I guess I need to update it. Oops. Um, yeah, but a 6400s, they are, they're the move minimalism. So right after talk about buying a bunch of shit, uh, let's talk about getting rid of a bunch of shit. So I don't have much to say on this one, but it's just a topic that I've you know, it's, it's bubbled up over the past few years for me. Like I've, you know, first heard about it through probably the minimalism documentary, which Matt Diavella made, who is my, maybe one of my, in my top few YouTubers. Now he's definitely inspiring a lot of the filming style that I'm going for more recently. And, um, yeah, I mean, honestly, this one's been on my list for a while. I don't have as much to say about it right now, but I think it ties in with the, um, just this general pursuit of, of something better for our lives. I think it's the same thing as trying to build an online business. I think it's the same thing as trying to meditate in the morning. It's the same thing as trying to eat healthy. We're all just trying to structure our lives in a way where we're present and we're doing what we feel we want to do, whether that's minimalism, whether that's having enough money, whether that's, you know, traveling the world, whether that's, you know, clearing your head by meditating for an hour a day, um, whether that's, you know, doing less and having less on your task list. I think it all just comes down to this essentialist, intentional life. And so, yeah, I mean, over the, not too recently, but we've got rid of a lot of stuff. Not that we weren't, we didn't have that much, but the only place we have any clutter is like, you know, this camera closet with all that shit. But even that I just talked about sort of refining that some crap in the garage a bit, but for the most part, we have a pretty minimal style of living. You know, I have a few areas that I splurge on. It's not about being cheap, but it's about being intentional about the things that are around me and not just being flooded with a bunch of crap. And you know, this applies to, <clears throat> to content consumption. This applies to so many areas beyond just the physical things in your house, right? But 
the overarching concept is to free up space for yourself. So now another 180 from minimalism to six figure Porsches. Uh, I want to talk about this for just a minute. I am, I've been extremely obsessed. Um, a couple updates in this realm. Um, I have the Porsche Cayman GT4. That's what I'm driving. I just got it back from BBI where I spent entirely too much money on getting the roll cage and harnesses and everything for like the safety of uh, driving it on the track, which I've already done with the car, but I'm getting it you know, more outfitted for, for safety and it also looks super cool. So just got that back, spent a lot on that, um, but it's for safety. So that's going on. I've been incredibly obsessed and there's something I'm doing that is potentially going to lead to a new business. This is not the next point quite yet. They're kind of interrelated, but I've been particularly obsessed with the paint to sample cars. So this is the Porsche does their, um, you know, basically custom order colors. I won't bore the people that don't care about this. Obviously there's more for the nerds out there that know what I'm talking about. I know it goes a lot more specific than this, but let's just say any unique color Porsche, it's this paint to sample thing and people nerd out about all the rare colors. And, and so do I, I started this Instagram account called PTS for sale, paint to sample for sale. <clears throat> Excuse me talking for a while. Um, and it was such a need that didn't exist, like not a need, but, um, I wanted it, you know, there was nowhere you could just see these cars for sale. Cause it's not like something you could sort search sort by on like an auto trader by model. Cause it's very particular and nowhere it did it. So I started tracking these cars and posting them on Instagram and it has like almost 7,000 followers. Um, not even three months in, I mean, it's just taking fire and uh, it's really interesting because I think that could potentially lead to a very interesting business. If I start somehow brokering these, you know, 200, 300, $400,000 cars or something, there's been people that have already offered fee finders fees and things like that. I just started it for fun, but it clearly is like onto something. I have no doubt that this is going to be a business, an accidental business in another, you know, six to 12 months. We'll see where it goes. But for anybody that is a Porsche or car fanatic, you know, check out PTS for sale, go down the, go down the Porsche Skittle rabbit hole. <clears throat> uh, my new business, this ties in cause, uh, you know, ties into the losing my ambition thing. I've been trying to do more things that are, I am excited about one of them being the podcast that is coming. Uh, one of them even being the PTS for sale account, which is just fun. Uh, not really something I started with ROI in mind, but just a project, you know, just a fun project to pursue. And another one, <clears throat> because I've been so obsessed with cars and Porsches, especially in the last year, um, I'm starting a car parts brand, actually. Uh, I won't get too into the details just yet as things are sort of still in production. I just hit the most ridiculous wall I've ever hit in, um, in getting a product produced, which is that we had everything like ready to go and the supplier wants to give up on it because they think it needs to be a little too precise for them. And they're, I guess they're worried that they can't hold up the standards that we want. And I actually think they can, but it's just weird. I've never been in that situation where the supplier wants to bail. So that just came up and kind of, uh, you know, screwed up our plans. Cause I thought we were literally about to start the production run. Um, that's weird, but dealing with that, got a lot of other ideas in the works for it, but it's an interesting space to get into. Cause we're talking about high price points for the most part. We're talking about uh, an area where nobody knows anything about marketing. Like everyone's business model is just to exist. So it's going to be really easy, I feel, for, for me, uh, and I have a partner in this, by the way, to cut into these markets. Um, yeah, I'm just really excited for where, where that leads. I think it's going to be a lot of fun. And other than this recent hiccup, it's been just a lot of fun. And then all of a sudden I was like, Oh shit. But I think we'll figure it out. Um, what else am I working on? So, um, I mean, of course giving, I mean, I'm so bipolar with YouTube. I, a week ago I was saying I, I'm giving more effort than ever to YouTube. I think I still am, but I definitely took like a bit of like a 10 day or so, uh, break there which was weird because I was really trying to like really give it a go, but then just hit that, hit that bummer. So, um, YouTube, of course, of course I am 
still running everything that you already know about. Um, I haven't been as focused on the growth of it because I'm more interested in maintaining that as a lifestyle business that funds things and frees up time and energy for other things, which is the whole point. And I don't know why I even feel weird saying that because that should be the goal. But I feel like there's such expectation for growth, 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 that it almost feels weird to say that, but that's the, that's what I want. <laughs> that's what I should be doing. That's what everyone should be doing once they get to that point. So, um, you know, I'm, I'm of course still doing, um, uh, I'm still very interested in that model and I'm still doing everything with it and I'm still teaching it. I'm, I mean, I enjoy that more to be honest, um, than, you know, continuing to poke around in PPC after four years. Uh, so zero to brand is going to have an update relatively soon, uh, right after I finish up this project, which is I've been working for a long time on an in-depth, uh, free training model. So learning about, um, well, from my end, learning about copywriting and all of that, but also creating this free, very valuable training that will both help people learn about Amazon in a way that is not crappy, like a lot of what's out there. And it will also hopefully <clears throat> lead to zero to brand for some people. And so that's something I've been working on that should be up very, very shortly. For those of you interested in Amazon can uh, check out the free, the free training. Um, that should be really soon. And I think uh, once I get that up and rolling and you know, I am gonna run ads to it, things like that. But of course I'm trying to do it in an ethical, not spam annoying way. I mean, that's very important to me. That's why I've never really, that's why it took, that's why it took a long time. And that's why I've never really blasted people with by my course and all that. Um, but yeah, when, once that's out, um, I'm definitely going to do a revision, you know, some, some updates, some new content. Uh, nothing is, nothing is out of date, just like little things like you know, I don't know, something in there that said 2018 and now it says 2019, like the, the two cent difference in fees or whatever, or just like a little, uh, UI change, stuff like that. I mean, it doesn't really matter, but I also just want to add new valuable content to it, which is the main plan, uh, <clears throat> which will be my project for a bit. Once I get this free training, really rocking and rolling, rock and rolling. That's not something I would ever say unless there was a camera on me. Isn't that weird? <laughs> uh, multiple channels. So this is what I alluded to earlier about part of why I do have so much ambition for YouTube. So you know about the Matt Loberstein channel, you know about the clips channel. <clears throat> those I hope could be huge because just talking about those alone, I would really like to talk about a large variety of topics, things that I just think are important kind of like how I mentioned everything I said about the podcast, basically the same can apply to YouTube, important topics, things that I think are they, that things that I think need to get out there. And I think others would feel the same way. And I want that platform to be able to do that. And another benefit of having a large platform is being able to, um, ignite the spark for new things. And, um, I have some ideas, that I don't quite want to reveal yet, but let's say hypothetically, let's say my channel was like my friend Graham Stephan and you know, I just massive, I went from a hundred thousand to a million subs in the last year. Or even if I just said, you know, a hundred, the number doesn't matter. It's not about the number, but, uh, I'm checking on the recorder by the way, if you wonder why I'm looking there. Um, <clears throat> so if I was at that point, you can light the spark for, let's say a new YouTube channel about a different subject. Let's say a topic that I think is important and basically becoming a media company for YouTube channels, because I've learned a lot about making moderately decent videos, I guess. And I think there's a formula. I think that I could do this. Um, you know, I think growing up, I was really, I loved movies and it's weird that in a way I'm kind of doing that to some extent, these mini movies, especially of my recent style of videos over the past month or two and, you know, learning that craft more and then doing it on other subjects would be really interesting. And I think that would be cool. I'll, I'll reveal one, 
silly example because this one's not exactly life changing to anybody, but, um, you know, actually I don't even want to quite say it yet. I thought of something, but let's just say it's like one would be maybe related to, uh, the car stuff that I'm so obsessed with. Right. So that would just be kind of a for fun one. But if I was at a point where I felt like I could light that spark and then like hire people to manage it because there was going to be, you know, income from the ads or something. Whereas like right now it's just like, I'm not really willing to hire people. I mean, I'm already basically losing money on my YouTube channel when I, when it comes down to the investment of editing, obviously I make money through other means of my personal brand, but when we're talking just YouTube, it's probably in the red. So I don't exactly want to go hire a bunch of people, start a bunch of channels and make negative, you know, six figures <laughs> off of that project. But if it got to a point where, you know, there was substantial ads and sponsorships and I don't know, merch and shit like that, even not for Matt Loversy necessarily, but for others, um, then it would be really interesting to be in a position to spin those off and kickstart them. Um, just an idea. And I think that's something that would really excite me a lot and I'd have a lot of fun with. So that's a big part of why I do want YouTube to go somewhere is to be able to expand both through Matt Loberstein and also through other avenues possibly. So that's some thoughts. This one's pretty random. Leaving California. Um, spoiler alert, this is definitely not happening right now. Um, but it's something Jessica and I definitely talk about. And I just kind of want to talk about it semi-publicly to, I don't know, put it out there, see if anyone comments on it, just what people think. But I'm so torn about, you know, staying here versus leaving. And... Now that I'm even talking about, I don't know how deep I want to get into this, but there's a lot of downsides of LA, you know, there's a lot of just toxic, um, culture and toxic environment. You know, I, we're very obsessed with health and biohacking and it's just very hard to escape. <clears throat> it's very hard to escape a lot of exposures to certain things living in a place like LA. Um, you know, <clears throat> sorry, geez, I should have brought some water over for this one take. Um, <clears throat> but you know, whether we're talking about just pollution in the air, pollution in the ocean, sound pollution, you know, just the constant noise, the constant rustle, uh, the, the vibe of people just all being very intense. A lot of people that are stressed and un, unhappy, unfulfilled, they're just running, you know, um, there's a lot of tension in LA, um, electronics, EMFs, you know, um, radiation, uh, from electronics, there's just, you, you can't really get away from this stuff living in these tight, confined environments, light pollution, uh, everything ends with pollution, but you know, it's freaking light out at night here because there's so many freaking lights. It's, it drives me insane. And since we are so into natural living and biohacking, those types of things, um, at some point it's just inevitable that we have to go, you know, semi off the grid, not like maybe off the grid, off the grid, but more off the grid than this. Right. It just seems inevitable. Um, especially as we eventually get to a point of, you know, having kids or something like that. Like there's no way that that would happen in LA. Just crazy. Um, so, but then on the other hand, I just have so many people here and there's a buzz, you know, that same thing that kind of has negativity has a lot of positivity and, I can just, I meet a lot of new people here. I have, I'm more connected with people than I've ever been in my life, honestly. And it's, it's, there's a lot of interesting people. There's a lot of people doing things. There's a lot of people that are thinking about the types of things that I'm thinking about, which there's not, that sounds weird, but most of the world is not thinking about the things that I'm thinking about. And sorry if that sounds very arrogant or cocky, but I just mean, I think those of you that know me well by now, kind of know what I'm getting at with this. And, um, you know, most people are not alive. <laughs> They're just robots. And, uh, you know, you can see through their skin and see that there's just gears and circuit boards underneath there. So, you know, that's about all I have to say on that. I just think it's inevitable at some point and I don't know where, but it's inevitable at some point.
I don't know when, and I don't know how because I am so tied into our places, our friends, our people. It's just, it's crazy. Yeah. Uh, second to last thing, time management. Kind of already t- covered this, but um, one more thought on it that is what I had on my list here is that a new thought I've had recently is that um, the more I can slow down and be intentional with my time, the slower time goes. <laughs> so this is kind of the solution to the time anxiety thing and some a solution I'm, you know, direly trying to achieve, not super effectively, but, you know, it's something I'm trying to be conscious of. What I mean is that I find the more I am actually aware of how I'm spending my time at that present moment, the more the day gets long. (laughs) The days that fly by are the ones where I'm in a hectic whirlwind of just one thing to the next. And those days often feel like you get nothing done because you're just constantly doing a bunch of shit that gets thrown at you. Whereas there's occasionally a sliver of a day where I just feel very present and I feel like, oh, it's only 9 a.m. and I have a bunch of time to do all this stuff and I'm gonna do this for a couple hours do this for 20 minutes. I'm going to go for a walk and just, you know, have those, those intentional days. So I think the more you can be intentional with your time, the more you can slow it down, the more that sounds like a prescription, the more I feel that I am in control and spending my time wisely when I am aware of it. It's like a, it's like a time meditation throughout your entire day. Just be aware of where the time is going and by the simple fact of looking at it it seems to open up and have more time writing so some of you may have seen uh especially those of you that would actually watch the end of this my god um i've been doing these a a bit of of writing on facebook i have a, a few posts over the past month or so that i was really proud of and i really enjoyed writing um yeah. So maybe more of that to come. That's on my Facebook page. It's just Facebook FB.com slash Matt Loberstein. Not my personal. I don't touch my personal really. Uh, follow the main page, not the personal, not cause I, I just don't do anything with it. So yeah, look at some of those posts. Um, I was really proud of them. And, and a couple people even said like, you should write a book. And I don't think that's something that's going to happen now, but kind of like the moving away thing. Maybe eventually. I think it's something that's, it could happen. Um, You know, that's the type of thing that when I figure out this time problem that I alluded to earlier, that's a project that would be nice to undertake if I feel like I've tied up my loose ends and I can dig into something that is a long in-depth creative project. That is the type of thing I would like to do, you know, and, and get back to things like, um, like music. I grew up loving music, playing music, all kinds of instruments, electronic music, everything. And just getting into that, getting back into that space where I have the time to create, whether it's music, whether it's even videos or like for the other channels or for, you know, mini documentary type videos for, for my main channel, those creative projects I think are what give me life, you know, having interesting conversations, the podcast, stuff like that. So I think that those posts could almost be like the seeds of a book. I don't know. Somebody suggested that. I don't know, but, um, yeah, just a weird thought for the, for the next five years or so, let's just say that's probably not going to happen, but I would like to keep these posts up. You know, I'm trying to put thought into them. I think my writing style has got better. I think this also ties into copywriting, which these posts are not sales. These are nothing. There's not, there's, they're, they're just thoughts, right? They're just things that I think are important, similar to some of the videos I've made lately, you know, stuff about time, time anxiety, for example, and, uh, you know, social media and, uh, distraction, things like that I've written about. And, um, yeah, I mean, I'm enjoying it. So I'm, I'll probably do a bit more of that. And yeah, so, I think that's it.
this was this was interesting. This was just a, a uh, I don't know, a 45 minute therapy session with myself. Um, interesting. So, yeah, if you um, you know, I'm not going to ask anybody to subscribe or smash the like button on a video like this. But if you're watching this to the end, like, my God, like, whoa, whoa, you are. Let me know, like uh, send me send me an email so I make or not. You can leave a comment. I'm, do what do something to make sure that I know that you actually saw this. Let's just say that um, I'll be looking for it, and I'll there'll probably be like zero of them, and that's fine. But yeah, just I just really appreciate all of you that are really engaged, and I think a lot about with the time anxiety thing, I think a lot about how I spend other people's time, right? And my goal would be that I really do have people's attention, but that I'm never wasting it. That's my thoughts on that because I think so much shit out there is a waste of time and so much shit out there you don't need to be consuming and it's just mindless distraction. So the more that I can put something out there that I feel good about the fact that people are spending their time on consuming it and hopefully being better for it. That is a worthy goal for me, I think. And that's why I want my YouTube to grow. That's why I want to do this podcast. That's why I'm doing any of these content things at all is I want to put out messages that I think can help people, can impact people, can just make people a couple percent better in some way, a couple percent happier here or there and a couple percent more, more thoughtful about things. So yeah, um, that's the way that I think about it. So yeah. All right. I don't know how to wrap this video up. So if you're actually there, really, really, really do appreciate you and I'll see you soon.